Welcome back, folks. The beta season for the rank battle mode has begun this week. So I took some time, grinded like 6 hours, 7 hours to reach the final rank. Rank number 5 or the red badge with a yellow star in this game mode. So I think it's a pretty sweet in-game feature. The first of its kind for World of Tanks. Because previously when you reach tier 10 vehicles, all you have to do is start anew with a new grind towards another tier 10 or play the tier 10 for fun. And that was pretty much it. So there was nothing to do unless you're doing personal missions, but you could do that for tier 9 or tier 8s, whatever. So now you have a final end game feature that only applies to tier 10 vehicles, making them special. And yes, I do like this kind of feature. I do think it's only should be applied to tier 10 because if you apply to tier 8 or tier 6 then people will buy like OPS, Chrysler K's and just flood the game mode. So it's not special for tier 10's anymore. So I do like this factor but there's only one aspect about rank battle mode that I really don't like. And that's the advanced equipments. So advanced equipments are boring, already talked about it but it doesn't give a personality towards your tank that you really like that you play in the rank battle mode. It just gives it a little bit better stats. I wanted hot pink camo or the leopard stripes or tiger stripes or whatever. But yeah, I already talked about this, but let's do some discussion. Let's do some analysis. And I'll give you guys some tips about the rank battle mode after I reached rank number five, which is not that special. <laughs> so here's the summary about this game mode. If you're new to World of Tanks, so it's basically a random mode with only tier 10 vehicles. There's no encounter or assault battle type. So all you have to do is kill the opponents, all of them, or capture their base. Basic random battle mode conditions. You earn rewards, rankings, and leaderboard points with this mode. Battles are matchmaker based on rankings. So it's their ranking, it's not WN8, so it's not very specific like actual damage dealt compared to your own health, accuracy or capture points or assisted damage, so not that specific. Basically what I'm trying to say is you could bullshit your way towards the top by being carried with your teammates or carried by your teammates. So yeah, it's not exactly skilled based matchmaking. It's just like skill-ish plus your luck. Alright, so you earn ranks by chevrons, top 12 players on the winning team, top 3 on the losing team, and points will be tallied into the leaderboard. So you earn 1 point per rank. So in the end you'll reach like 5 points, and you can add more points by achieving specific vehicle chevrons, or specific vehicle uh, ranking leaderboard stuff. So you'll see with the pictures coming up, but it's basically like prestiging in Modern Warfare. So, all right, fun stuff. But here are some factors. So rank battle modes will come in seasons with multiple stages. So there's a limitation. There might be a break after each season. So this game mode won't be on all the time. So it won't be available. There is a ceasefire limitation, which is basically this game mode is only available during prime time on various servers. So for the North America, this game mode is only available from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock p.m. That's three hours each day. I mean, there are some downsides and there are some upsides to this limitation. The obvious downside is not that many players could play the game at this specific limited amount of time. Like what if you have a job, night shift, or if you have to deal with your kids homework or school stuff. I mean, yeah, there are a few obvious limitations, but there are also upsides. The biggest upside I can think of is the limitation on rigging the whole game mode. So originally for the uh, Rampage game mode, ooh, so people would wake up at 4 o'clock or like 3 o'clock in the morning and rig the game mode by having only a limited number of players 
and they will queue up at the same time. So they will always face each、uh, face each other with no other players, and they will basically rig for the T22 medium. So with this limitation, it just cuts down on the rigging. And on a side effect note, it's a little bit better for the random battle mode because all the unicorns, all the blueberries are playing this game mode and not trashing on the tomatoes in the normal matchmaking or random battle matchmaking. So side effect. But there's also a server limitation, so it's only available for North America East, not for the West. So if you're playing from the West, there is a lag. There's a higher ping, so yeah, you cannot complete daily missions like tank rewards. So you have to play with random battle mode for the XP needed. You cannot complete personal missions. So sadly, there are a lot of hit points for some of the missions, but oh well. And personal reserves are counted, so it does help to use like crew XP bonus or credit making bonus or free XP. And your WN8 performances will be added towards the overall calculation. All right, so basic factors. But here are the rewards and the rankings. So as you can see, rank number one to rank number five, and then that's prestige, like specific vehicle prestige. So why should you prestige? Is because of the points. So you、uh, you will add points towards the leaderboard, and that will add. Better chances of you getting better rewards for the season. So we'll talk about that. But individual rewards are the each tiers ish. So individual rankings. You have mission-based rewards, which are tied to how well you perform during those battles. There is a stage-based reward crate. So it happens at the end of a stage, and there is a season-based. Crate, which happens at the end of the season, so you only receive one crate for the season, and you'll receive four crates for the stage if you perform or attended all stages. So it's like different stages and seasons, I guess. And the supply crate contains gold, bonds, credits. Who knows? So RNG based, and I do like that they're implementing such a feature because I predicted from last. December or、uh, the Swedish event with the ornament ornament drop crate thing. So they were testing this feature. Now they're adding it towards the rank battle mode. So RNG factor, I guess. But all right, it's not as annoying to piece together all to <laughs> all tier five、uh, ornaments. Ugh. So here is the rank and mission based rewards. So once you reach a specific rank, you'll receive a standard award of stuff like credits or consumables or garage slot or personal reserves. There are mission for the rank battle mode, so you can try them out, and you'll receive credits, premium consumables. I saw the premium consumables for credits because I don't really use them, so pretty nice. All right, small stuff for compensating against all the gold shell spam. I guess, but oh well. Here is the stage-based reward. So there are different stages for the season. You'll receive one based on your ranking at the end of the stage. So if you do pretty well, you'll receive a bigger box and more stipend of bonds. If you don't do so well, not as big of a box. So whatever. But all your rankings will be reset at each stage. So currently the stages are. One per week, so your rankings will be reset. But I believe you'll receive the red badge for your name if you already reach like only one stage, rank five. So unless you reach all the rank five, but doesn't matter. So you don't have to do all of them. Just do one stage, and you get a little red badge. That's what I'm trying to say. So all right, that's pretty nice. But here is the biggie. So leaderboard is the big deal. If you have enough points on the leaderboard per rank, so you'll receive one point per rank. All the ranks or all the points will be added up together at the end of the season. And the higher you are on the list, and the more chances you will be at getting the league reward. 
So if you're on the top 10% of the whole leader chart or leaderboard, you'll receive a gigantic box of RNG stuff, 5,750 bonds, and a special little badge. For the 10% to 25%, it's like smaller box, 3,250 bonds and silver badge. And for the 25 to 50%, you'll receive a much smaller crate and 1,500 bonds and a bronze badge. So pretty interesting. Now, this is based on points. So it means that reaching the highest rank, rank number five, does not guarantee you to get a league one reward so it depends on how many players on the top of the league on the leaderboard so this is not based on your ranking this is based on how many uh, how many points you gather during the season so here you can see with this chart I took a screenshot but as you can see these players only reached rank number four currently but they are eligible for the league one big ass crate so if you have a lot of players reaching rank 5 then the top 10 percent the scale or the limitation goes up so even if you reach rank number five but if you don't do that much damage or win that much win percentage i guess based on their rating you probably only receive the league 2 reward or so on and so forth so that's based on the points not based on the actual ranking per season or per stage not season so those are the rewards but that's a big ass crate i wonder what's inside but as for advanced equipments already talked a lot about those so <sighs> i really hate these things these are not really like personalized customization doesn't give a personality towards your vehicle just makes them a little bit better at firing or better view range and or small stuff but doesn't give it personality doesn't give the hot pinkness or the leopard stripedness the cool aspect to a specific player liking a specific tier 10 vehicle so i already talked about this but depending on the crate rng at the end of the season league one players will probably receive about 8,000 to 10,000 bonds so enough for about one to two equipments. League two will receive about 5,000 to 7,000. And League three will about 2,000, 3,000 ish. So yeah, you won't see that much advanced equipments unless it's on League one players. So it's like marathoning, but the rewards are just, yeah. Specifically for advanced equipments. But I do like bonds i like the factor of bonds as a currency because you can buy or gives the opportunity or creates the environment to buy camo like leopard stripes or hot pinkness or body kits or sandbags for logs and other stuff onto your vehicles making them special or buy a ghillie suit for your tank that would be pretty sweet they added a stupid stats boosting grammar all right <laughs> so after reaching rank five the big red badge and big star thing so overall win eight or wn8 spread perception from the ranks is basically at rank zero through one it's like 50 percent lemon 30 percent kiwi 10 percent tomatoes and blueberries and unicums so that's the spread so usually that's about like average of 1,500, 1,300 win 8, WN 8. At ranks 2 to 3, it's like 20% lemon, 40% kiwis, 35% blueberry and unicums. So it's a little bit more tougher. And rank 4 through 5, it's like 10% lemons, 30% kiwis, and the rest are OPS, highly skilled players. Wonderful. So here is the meta generalization. So imagine the T25, pilot number one marathon, uh, but more gold spam and more unicorns, unicorns everywhere. That's pretty much it. So everybody cluster fox, it's a orgies of lemmings that zerg rush a part of the map all together. <laughs> oh God, it's, it's scary. I mean, if the lemmings 
if the blob are well coordinated, you cannot stop them. It's like a Zerg rush, and you're only one vehicle. You cannot stop. You cannot stop like 15 of them rushing towards you, wolf packing you down from a lot of directions. Holy crap! It's scary, but it's kind of like the grand finals with 15 players coordinating together, not seven or eight. So it depends on the meta. It depends on how well the defenders are holding up against the rush. The Zerg rush, but it's mostly medium tanks and heavy tanks, about 80%. Tank destroyers are like 15%, artillery 3.5, and light tanks are like 1.5. So, why play light tanks when you couldn't play medium? Yep. <laughs> so, here are some tips about how to do well in this game mode. So, follow the limbing blob, but don't snipe. Uh, just snipe, but don't go forwards. With them, so snipe from the back. Try snipe, right? So don't be like with the blob because if you all fail, you all die, and it's pretty hard to gain XP out of it. So focus on killing targets rather than dealing damage. Don't go off by yourself, even if you have two other players or three other players. The meta is a blob <laughs> of like ten players or twelve players. You will get overrun. And zerg down if you go by yourself. So don't even think about it. Just snipe from the back. You'll do fine. Six cents and temporary camouflage paint is a must. So everybody has about 440 meters of view range or even more, or like 420 to 440. There are bat chats with super high camo rating. Everybody's a unicum with like 10 skills or seven skills. Holy crap! So make sure you go everywhere with a cautious intent. So everything could be like hiding in the bushes, and nobody would know. So it's scary out there. But sixth sense is a must. So at least one skill for all your crew for the tier ten vehicle, and you don't need that much gold shell. It's mostly medium tanks. You will penetrate a high caliber. 105 or 120 millimeter shells, you'll penetrate, but you need a few gold rounds for mouses and Type Fives, and sometimes the Akpanzer E100. But that's not that often, not that often. So you don't need that much gold. It's not a gold sling slugfest that everybody is pretending to do. So eh, it's fine, and you don't need premium consumables. You can do everything pretty well. I do everything with normal consumables and about. Only ten rounds of gold shell, so just snipe from the back. But it's only a game. Remember, rank battle mode is similar to random battle mode. Everything is just random people, just a little bit more skilled. But who who's counting? Who cares? So it's only a game. Why、well, you have to be mid? Don't go to like try hard. It's all right if you don't win. You can be carried. I got carried to rank five. I did jack all. I did jack shit. <laughs> so here's some screenshots of the meta that I participated in. So here is the El Haluf. I'm playing with my IS-7, and there's a blob of dudes <laughs> camping the corner. Oh god, I have no gun depression. I the hull armor is weird on the slope, so it's not as good. So yeah, there's a blob. So that's a fun time. Here is my Action X Centurion. So there, there's the blob. <laughs> I'm sniping from the back. So you guys take care of all the stuff. I'll snipe. Oh, just carry me, carry me to winning. <laughs> And here is on the whatever this map is called. I totally forget. Oh well, but there's the blob. Everybody's zerging this area. So might as well wolf pack. But that's how the way it goes. So play a little bit more cautiously. Let the blob do the blob stuff. If the blob fails, survive long enough to get a little bit more damage by sniping from the back. If you if the blob is moving correctly and everything is working out, try to get to the like the top twelve or top ten. You'll be fine. You'll be carried as long as you're not the top or the bottom three. So you should be like one before the bottom three. You should be fine. So. <laughs> So here is the final screenshot of my dumb luck. So as you can see with this match, I basically missed 40% of the my shells. 
So only penetrated like four rounds, dealt about 1,000 damage, spotted about 1,000 damage, lost 20,000 credits. So basically a super bad match for all tier 10 vehicles, right? But as you can see, I'm tier four for the ranking or rank number four with two chevrons. And somehow with my crappy performance, how the hell am I t uh, two, <laughs> number two on the team? <laughs> What? What kind of algorithm is this calculating? So I have no idea. I did terrible damage. Like 949. <laughs> That's terrible. And no spotting damage. I basically kill still three vehicles and that's pretty much it. How the hell did I reach top two? <laughs> so there you go folks. My journey through rank battle mode. It's a, it's a meme, spicy meme, but you can get carried. So don't worry about all the good players will reach oh, so many good bonds and advanced equipments and stuff. No, you can basically get carried. I did stupidly at tier 4 or rank number 4. That's how I did with <laughs> 2 chevrons. So I reached rank number 5 and stopped playing because whatever. But yeah, that's a rank battle mode. So I do wish in the future... Um, Wargaming would import more stuff towards the purchasable bond mechanic so you can buy a camo like hot pink, leopard stripe, red tiger, or autumn stripes, so modern warfare stuff like that into the game, which you can buy with bonds. You can also buy stuff like body kits, like sandbags, or specific sheeting of metal next to the side skirts or other stuff. So, body kits customizable junk like sandbags, logs, uh, spare track lanes, machine guns, or whatever. So all the good stuff, but as for advanced equipments, they don't have a personality, so it feels boring, but that's my journey through rank battle mode. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys learned something from it, but that's all I have to say about this stuff. So spicy meme, but I'll see you guys next time. Peace.